Hey guys, welcome back to yet another episode of the AIP podcast. And today, we are thrilled to have Eric Peterson, the founder of Origami XR. Now, over the years, Eric has been dedicated to making complex technology accessible to every single person. He believes that by adopting Origami XR, users in construction space and similar sectors will have a much clearer path to scaling their operations and understanding what it means to do so. Now, believe it or not, the solution can be easily used by workers, literally, using the phone that's in the hand. Now, Origami XR is a technology company based in Toronto, Canada, that focuses on making complex 3D technology more intuitive and accessible so that they can impact how people live, work, and interact with the world around them. The patented technology enables people and organizations to express ideas without compromise and to communicate them easily to anyone, anywhere. Huge warm welcome to you, Eric. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks, Anne. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, how you, uh, you came to be, your, your background, and you know, why did you start Origami XR? And specifically, why construction? Yeah, great question. Um, so, you know, myself, I've I've spent a bunch of time in uh, in the three D uh, kind of technology space. I worked at, uh, doing most of my projects in college on that. So I went to Columbia down south in the states and um, had you know a great time with the technology, but it was very early days still uh, for it. And but I could see that there was kind of this future path coming, um, and so. You know, my main excitement is around how this technology is going to allow us to open up, uh, you know, computing in general to groups of people that have not benefited from it so far. And so that's kind of where construction comes in. Construction is, you know, one of the biggest markets in the world, um, but still it has not benefited enough from computing. You have like some guys kind of, you know, in the trailer who are using computers. Uh, to help benefit stuff but really we've just only recently seen phones kind of come into play uh phones and ipads and things and all the technology is really just about getting info for those guys in the trailer and it's not really suited or built for the people who are actually doing the work to to bring them benefits and that's really what our focus is we want to make sure that like no matter how big your team is um you know without any it expertise you can roll out something on site that improves your communication that improves your documentation, and that allows you to, you know, take part in what's going to be a huge transformation when AI starts to be applied to construction. So tell me a little bit about the AI and Origami XR solution. How does that work and how does it drive customer value? Yeah, I think that the, the best way to think about it is, you know, if you're familiar with self-driving cars uh, and the kind of autonomous car revolution that's happening right now, uh, it's really best to look at that as almost like a data engine. So the cars that are out on the roads right now are really just collecting information to train models so that you can basically have the, the, the AI understand the environment that it's inside of to be able to make decisions. And so what we've done is we've built that same sort of data engine focused on phones. So we think that phones are going to be the most important tool for construction workers. And so what we've done is we have a data engine that pulls in data from the construction teams and then allows them to apply their own labels and their own kind of comments on it. Um, but we end up with a good data stream that can train models that can start that perception loop. Um, and so essentially, like, really, we want to have something that's kind of like a robot that's in your phone, like a kind of like a another worker on site that's going to be able to give you advice, uh, maybe identify possible, you know, code violations uh, or other things that might be there um, that you may not see right away. And so like having that other person over your shoulder is going to be a really helpful way to both improve timelines, make things faster, but then also to, you know, improve the quality of the work in the end. You know, I can literally see that you can use an origami environment as a base for an interactive game. Have you considered that at all? For an interactive game? Yeah. Did you say? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that, you know, once you start reconstructing, capturing and reconstructing 3D environments, 
you definitely have the ability to do anything on top of them. Um, now, you may say game, but like what I think about when I think of game for construction is training. Like if, if I've captured the 3D environment and I have a history of it over time, seeing how things are built and put together, I could put anybody inside that 3D environment and allow them to watch the build as it progresses and understand it in a way that you can only understand it when you're physically in the space, right? Um, and so that you know ability to transfer the knowledge of being present in a space as it evolves uh, has already been proven to actually improve training results and uh, memory retention of lessons and things like that by a huge amount. So like there's a lot of kind of long-term paths for taking this type of data and turning it into something that is going to accelerate other parts of the same industry. But for us, the first step is that that data engine, making sure that we're kind of capturing good data based on the environments that we're working in and then delivering value right away, even if it's just images. That's fascinating. So what's on the horizon for our Origami XR? Where do you think you will take this solution? Yeah, honestly, I think that it's the whole idea of having a, a driving car in your in your pocket, uh, like not in the sense that it's like an actual going to drive or anything, but in the sense that it's going to perceive the world and it's going to help you make decisions and it's going to help highlight potential issues. That type of uh, you know partnership between technology and physical workers is something that's been really missing for decades. You know, we've had all of the information workers of the world have these huge benefits that make them so much more productive give them asynchronous communication, which means less time sitting there and talking to your boss and more time just doing your work. And he gets updates, you know, through, you know, uh, asynchronous texts or emails or whatever, and like finding ways to, to bring those benefits that have been there for information workers for so long into the physical world is going to improve people's lives give them more time, you know, with their families, allow everybody to compress schedules. Like these are things that are going to benefit everybody. And I think that once we can bring them to bear, you know, we're going to see, I think the most important thing, which is a change in people's lives uh, who do this type of work. That's amazing. So I noticed that you're also a part of the Idea Boost Accelerator. Maybe you can share with us a little bit about your experience with them. Yeah, so we've, we've done the full kind of Canada tour of accelerators. We were in Idea Boost. Uh, we were in the Creative Destruction Labs. Um, we were a part of Next AI. Um, you know, I think that to have a healthy, uh, you know, environment for entrepreneurs to grow companies, it's really important to have these types of accelerators. Um, and I think that like Canada is kind of moving towards understanding what the most important parts of those are. To entrepreneurs, um, and so I hope I hope we see, you know, more things like that uh, in the future. But I really I really hope we see more things that are about just giving entrepreneurs the resources. You know, once somebody's in the game, uh, you know, advice is great, um, but I think that resources are actually the the key here, uh, and you know, you, not discriminating too much, just giving resources to entrepreneurs, like even like a UBI type thing, I think would help a ton. Uh, because really it's about de-risking the downside for people. And if we can de-risk that downside so that they can take more risks and be more adventurous about what they're building, I think we're going to see a huge benefit to the country. Absolutely. So what kind of advice would you give to young entrepreneurs who are trying to get started in developing technology specifically for industries, legacy industries like construction and manufacturing? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the advice that I would have benefited from the most in like, I don't think that, you know, advice is always going to work for, you know, everybody, the same advice, but uh, I think there's two main things. Um, the first one is do your market research early. Um, you know, I was definitely a technologist first and most excited about the technology, but I think that the main thing is to find somebody who wants the solution that you're building uh, and actually prove that they're willing to pay for it before you actually go out around building it, right? That's gonna be an LOI or some some form of like market proof that there's actually gonna be a landing place for what you're building. Um, I think that's really key. I think that the other big thing is around 
fundraising. Uh, fundraising is such a weird environment. Um, but the main advice I would give there is that don't listen to the words of venture capitalists or even some angel investors. The words are unimportant. Um, the actions are more important, but like the main thing is to, to basically nothing that they say means anything until you actually see money. So don't, don't like listen to like really positive signals and think like, oh, I'm excited. It's going to go really well. Or even negative signals when somebody's like, no, it's not going to happen because you can go back to that same person a week later with new data and they're going to flip the switch and come right in uh, to your round. Like the main thing is nothing that they say really means much. It's just about focusing on the actions. Um, and really, they're just trying to preserve optionality. So th those are the two things that I would say to any early entrepreneur. That's fascinating. Nothing means anything during fundraising. Yeah, yeah, that is so fascinating, but that is absolutely true. Well, thanks so much, Eric, for taking your time out to uh, chat with us today. So what are some ways our listeners can get in touch with you, Eric? Yeah, people can just uh, email me directly at eric at scanmanifold.com if they're interested in getting started with the product or learning more about what we're doing or maybe, you know, just having a conversation about the space. Absolutely. Uh, I, I will talk way too long about anything. So. <laughs> that sounds absolutely amazing. Thank you, Eric, once again. And once again, this is Anne Cheng from Supercharged Lab on behalf of the AI Partnerships Corp. And uh, for and on behalf the, of the AIP podcast, I am signing off. Thanks, Anne.